matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome, welcome to worship. worship. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you came back again this week as we gather together and apart to worship our God. This is going to be a wonderful time uh, to have a service in honor of our God, but we're also going to honor someone else today, our graduating high school senior, Sierra Shearcoke. We would normally have her speak and worship uh, toward the end of May and celebrate her and see great cute pictures of her as a kid, and we will do that in the fall. But she will be our special uh, worship leader, my co-leader this morning, and I hope that you're able to enjoy her presence, reflect on all that you've seen God do in her life, and then I will put our church's address at the end of our credits if you'd like to send her a card. First now, let's get going with worship. We're going to have a prayer, an invocation, and then enter into worship immediately as Carolee plays for us, Great is the Lord. Let us pray. In these moments, in this space, we invite you, God, to meet with us, speak to us, and teach us how to live out your love. Amen. now to continue this musical journey as we sing together a hymn that is familiar to you because we've sung it a couple times and we're going to continue singing it because it's written for us in this time and in this place the internet it speaks to our needs and it calls us to love so please join with me as we sing christians we have met to worship <music>
now going to hear today's scripture read to us by Sierra. The scripture continues our passage from last week. It's a letter written to people who are knowing real suffering and who are seeking to find God in the midst of their pain. So let's hear today's scripture. 1 Peter chapter 4, 12 through 14, and chapter 5, 6 through 11. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering, so that you will have a, the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed, for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Sierra. I believe it's in Matthew chapter 23 that Jesus says he longs to cover us and protect us like a mother hen. The Psalms also describe God in this way. God loves us like a mother hen protecting her children under her wings. And this song we're about to hear sung by the choir last year is calling out for that very thing. God, be my protective mother. Hold me at the cover of your wings. Keep me safe and empower me that I may serve you and glorify you. So let's hear this song by the choir. Thank you. 
I remember one of the last sermons I heard in seminary as we were preparing to graduate. It was given to us uh, by one of my favorite professors, Dr. Patrick Miller, who passed away just recently. And I remember all of my peers crowded into a church. This address was written directly to us graduating seniors of this group of young, ambitious pastors going out into the world to serve God. And Dr. Miller chose a passage that none of us expected. We thought maybe Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, or Jesus giving the Great Commission. But Dr. Miller didn't talk about Jesus. He talked about dragons. And he gave us all these images of dragons in the Bible and in the Apocrypha. And he essentially looked down at us, young, ambitious pastors. And from what I remember, it was something like, you're going into the world and you're going to face dragons. And they're going to raise up and they're going to overwhelm you and you're going to want to quit and your calling is to stand in the face of the dragon and serve God anyway. This sermon stuck out because my friends and I afterwards were laughing at how crazy it was that Dr. Miller would choose to talk to us about dragons while we're trying to celebrate graduation together. And then it was four or five years later after our first few years serving in churches and nonprofits, serving God's people, God's broken people, being in systems that were broken themselves, uh, we all got back together, we do each year, and looked at each other and went, yeah, Dr. Miller was right. He gave us the message we needed to hear that this big world is full of dragons. And our faith in God has to be big enough to face them. And I think it rings true today. We have this passage uh, from Peter, and it talks to us about our enemy, the devil. And a lot of people have different beliefs about demons and the devil and what is the devil. I don't believe the devil is a red being with hooves and horns and a fish pitchfork. Uh, but I think what we're given here is a powerful tool for perseverance and for resiliency. Because God is calling us to be pillars of light and love, to be living out the gospel in this world that is so difficult sometimes. And sometimes it feels like there are dragons and there are demons fighting against us. And you know what? Sometimes uh, it, there's a lot of power in naming something, making it, making clear that is not part of who I am, and making something the enemy. You're thinking, what, what are we talking about, Jenny? Well, let's take an example, um, hopelessness. I am often just overwhelmed with hopelessness, especially if I didn't sleep well the night before, and if more than three things go bad before 8 a.m., I can easily find myself standing in the kitchen of my house with my kids running, just wanting to live their lives, and I am overcome with this feeling of, this will never get better. This will never end. This is hopeless. And there is power in naming the fact that hopelessness is a thing of the world. It is one of those things that wants to attack you and it wants to overpower your life. But when you make it the enemy, you're saying, God, that is not a fruit of the spirit. That is not from you. That is not from the Holy Spirit. And so help me to stand against it. 
you know, sometimes we just need to know that we can fight these things, right? And notice that as I say there are demons in the world, there are things to fight. I am not naming people. I'm not naming the people who you think of as enemies already. We all have things we are struggling with daily. And if we forget to name it and to name the fact that it is not of us, it's easy to, for us to let it become us and take over our lives. And Peter warns this church, this early church, that was being persecuted. They were facing things that you and I can't even imagine. But they were going through some hard times. We can't imagine hard times. And he was encouraging them not to give in to the things that may overwhelm them. So friends, what demon do you need to name today? What thing can you look to heaven and say, God, this is not from you and I want to live life in the fullest. Help me to overcome it. Help me to cancel out the lies that this thought or this feeling, these lies that it's feeding me. Do you struggle with hopelessness like me? Maybe it's worry. Worry is not from God. And worry can feed a lot of lies. Maybe it's anger. This notion that a belief that you are always being attacked or persecuted, that there's someone out to get you. Maybe it's victimization. Do you feel like you are always just being attacked? That you, you, can't, you can't get a good luck in life that you are just always a victim once we give into that there's no room for god to work in our lives in a powerful way here's a hard one friends unworthiness do you feel worthy of god's love today because of those messages telling you you are not worthy you're not worthy of being loved you're not worthy of being a friend you're not worthy of God's attention. <laughs> you know that's not from heaven. Because Jesus made quite clear that we are all worthy. So this week, let's take a note from this passage in Peter. And let's ask for heaven to empower us. I'm going to ask for heaven to empower you this week so that every now and then, especially in isolation, sometimes we lose perspective, right? But now every now and then I, I'm asking for God to give us clarity of mind to realize that thought, that idea, even those thoughts coming from outside, from the news, from our neighbors, from our families, that is not from God and that is not the truth of heaven and I do not need to accept it. And if you want to, call it the devil. Call it the enemy. Call it poison. And then ask God to be our antidote. God, we do say that this life is hard and sometimes it's hard to know what is from you and what is a lie. Heal us from the wounds we've inflicted on ourselves and heal us from the wounds we inflict on each other when we are focusing on the wrong things and worshiping the wrong gods. Give us clarity of mind and give us strength to fight the lies, to embrace your truth, and to be people who live out your love and your light in this world. Amen. We're not going to enter a time of prayer together, praying together the Lord's Prayer, and then afterwards sing together a song that we usually sing and worship right after we pray for one another. 
I will cast all my cares upon you. And I pray as we do the, sing this song together that it continues to be the prayer of your heart. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us for another week. It's my honor to lead you in worship. I pray that as we go through each of these weeks that are so unknown and so uncertain, I pray that you are well, that God's love and peace and joy surround you. And I pray that when we see each other face to face once again, we have some more of God's love to offer. So we go into this week here, this blessing from Sierra. May our God of love bless you in this moment, in this day, and into the night. May God's peace go with you in your homes, in your work, and in your heart. May God's grace cover you to love well, to live securely, and to face each day with hope. Amen. <laughs>